been such a long time, I forgot that I was fine. Just kiss me on my neck, just breathe on my neck. So, um, I just been going through a lot. I had to cry. You had to cry sometime. I had to cry today. I needed to cry today. It's tough. Like coming in front of the microphone with that type of energy because you know I want to be high energy for what I'm saying and I want to be very focused in on what I have to say especially because I always tell myself like this is me playing chicken with a Mack truck because my memory is a Mack truck it's not gonna let me live like every time I tell myself I'm gonna remember it and then as soon as I started talking, it's like somebody walking through a field of butterflies. Those thoughts just take off just all at once. They don't even like gradually pick up like they just take off. It's like black people. One of them sees somebody running. They all start running. That's how my thoughts are. It's dark as obsidian, and it light and beautiful and bright as the sun, the salt of the earth, fire burning and water dripping. How could we be using goddess of magic? She is timeless. The pillow that doesn't need a plug. She is the wildest woman. And let me say it again for those who need to hear it. The black woman is God. Let me say it again. The black woman is God. Shit, you in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. Welcome to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo. Listen up. Listen up. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. I am your girl, Demi and Nikki, the original wireless woman. And welcome back to my spot, room 303. If you are new, welcome to my crew, but my returnees, you know what we do. If you like this video, well then like this video. Let the comments reveal how you really feel. And if you're feeling a vibe, well go ahead on and subscribe. But before you click, share this link. Welcome, welcome back Wi-Fi's to another Cult of Personality episode of The Wireless Woman. This episode is dedicated to emotional mirroring, or as I like to say, I know you are, but what am I as a person? So, before we get into today's content, you already know what time it is. It is time to call the Roll. So I need all of my monkey see monkey do's to the front of the class. It is time to read aloud. All right, so welcome to another episode of The Wireless Woman. Go ahead and do me a favor on your way in and like this video. Why? Because when you like it, well, I love it. So Today we're going to be talking all about emotional mirroring, but before we get into today's content, I want to announce that Wireless Wednesdays are a thing. So every Wednesday at 8, there will be a new Wireless Woman video. You can look forward to that, and if you can't be here with us in the chat where the chat be jumping, y'all, okay? But if you can't be here with us at 8 p.m. in the chat, just know that you can catch up at any time. We're also going to be doing a Wireless Woman episode every Sunday and post-gaming with me and Tan Talks at 
So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. And when you subscribe, go ahead and hit that notification bell so that you will be notified when we go live. All right. So emotional mirroring. You know, I wish narcissistic mirroring was more like Justin Timberlake mirrors. It's like you're my mirror. where all of the love and devotion that you feel for your partner is being mirrored through the way that you all treat each other and care for each other. But no, this is not that kind of mirror. This is more like a fun house mirror. This used to be a fun house. One of the active listening skills that they taught us during my time working as a 911 operator. Yes, yes, I have stories. Yes, I know you want to hear them. I know I could do a whole segment that's just nothing but tales from 911. However, one of the skills that they taught us early on that is very important for capturing information from other people, especially when they're in a frantic crisis state is emotional mirroring. It allows that other person to believe that you feel what they feel in an attempt to build a rapport quickly and to be able to make that person feel like you're there with them. It helps with memory recall. You know, a person is going to be a whole lot more vulnerable and tell you a whole lot more about their situation if they feel like you feel what they feel. And an empathetic person is able to do this quite naturally. However, for most narcissistic people, this talent or this ability has developed over time. It has developed as a manipulation tool for them to be able to build trauma bonds with people. Now, most people have some level of trauma in their lives. Traumatic events are one of the things that helps us to build empathy. It's traumatic events that builds our internal moral and spiritual strength. You know, there's lots of people that love to blame their parents and the way they were raised on how they grew up. But the truth of the matter is, without a certain amount of tension in your environment, without a certain amount of obstacles to overcome, you wouldn't be able to thrive. You know, babies have to fall a lot before they learn to walk. And so trauma, while it leaves its mark, if you are able to work through it, as opposed to living in it, you can actually get to probably a much more emotionally healthy place than you were before the trauma happened. But like I said, you got to do that work. Well, a lot of people don't, unfortunately, maybe not necessarily because you just wouldn't do the work, but we're just not always equipped with the skills from our background or our family upbringing to know how to address some of our traumas. And a toxic relationship is a place where your traumas become your strengths. Your traumas become some of the most attractive things about you. Your toxic traits are going to be magnified in this particular relationship. So the more trauma you bring, the better. Narcissists use that emotional mirroring capacity because you have to remember they don't actually have that level of empathy. They don't actually experience all of those emotions the same way that you do. So they're literally marking you and mapping the way you express emotions and just mirroring their image of how they see you back to you. That's why in the beginning, it's so good. It makes you feel so good about yourself. It makes you feel so euphoric and perfect. And you're the most wonderful person I've ever met. And then by the end, you're a monster. You're a villain. You're an outcast. You're an outlaw. Whatever it is, whatever the mirror has become for them, they were always just projecting out to you what they felt like were your best or worst qualities and traits. They're never able to operate outside of that, outside of the best or the worst of you. Just know that you are in a relationship with yourself. You are interacting with your own shadow man in the person of this narcissistic partner. 
there's no originality, no original thought coming off of these people. They're literally spoon feeding you back every move that you have made. They've been watching you. They've been learning you. And even though it can feel like the good times are getting better or even that the bad times are getting worse, it's really just a result of them learning more and more and more about how you move in order to keep you off balance, keep you guessing, keep you trying, keep you challenged, keep you energized, keep you depleted, whatever they need from you in that moment, as long as they're the ones pulling that string. So in the beginning with the trauma bond and the emotional mirroring, you feel like you've never met anyone who has so much in common with you. Baby, you sitting in front of a mirror. <laughs> That's why. And I'll tell you things that you already know. So you can say, I really identify with you so much. That's all. You are literally just having someone do to you what you really could just do to yourself, but you'll hear um, narcissistic people say in the devaluing stage, you never knew me. It was never about me. It was always about you. You just want me to do what you want me to do. And that comes from the two dimensional lackluster experience that they've been having with you because they literally have just been mirroring you. And the problem with Narcissus is that he stared at his reflection for too long. And the more and more and more and more that he stared at his reflection, he fell in love with it. He fell in love with his own reflection to the point that he no longer identified this as being himself. And so the same thing will happen with your narcissistic person. You'll stare on them being you so long that over time, it'll seem like they're becoming better and you're becoming worse. You will then become their mirror. It's like an exchange. It's like some sort of twisted horror movie where like in the end you get trapped inside the genie's bottle. It's like really weird, but that's pretty much what happens. And then you become an emotional mirror of all of the things that they really fear becoming themselves and they will project all of that onto you baby you will become you remember when we used to be in school in the 80s and they would bring in the little projector and the teachers would have the um <laughs> the projectors you know they write on the little transparencies and project it up that's literally that's literally what you are at that point you know and I know towards the end of my relationship I found myself just kind of on autopilot doing a lot of things that I just didn't want to do. And it's hard because a lot of times a narcissist will call you a narcissist and you will be behaving like them at the level that will almost make you think they might must be right because you're both locked into this toxic cocktail of challenge energy wrapped up in emotional mirroring. And it's hard to separate yourself from how they feel, from feeling like everything you do affects how they feel because everything they do affects how you feel. But, you know, you have to come to a place of really, really, truly searching for something deeper inside yourself. I do not believe that anyone who has a very healthy sense of self can fall into this type of trap. But most of us who fall prey to this type of manipulation have already been indoctrinated, have already been groomed from childhood to respond this way, to conform. You know, we're either, we either had that type of relationship with our parents or we're very dogmatic about religion. Like it's the straight laced, <laughs> color inside the lines people that really, really, really get taken by narcissistic people because we are the idealist of the world. You know, we are the people that are doing everything that we can to make everything happen for a reason. But one thing that I came to understand over time as I learned more and more about spirituality and I became more connected with myself, you have to think of yourself like 
a seed that's being planted in the ground and it has to grow down for a long time first before you can begin to even know what type of tree you have before it starts to bud and bloom before the leaves come out and before the fruit ever comes out and a lot of people have not budded they have not come to the fruition of what some of their character flaws could cause them to be. They just stay immature and stunted in their growth so that they don't have to actually face the truth about themselves. But what I found on my spiritual journey is that light, goodness, hope, you know, all of those fruits of the spirit are balanced out by darkness. You have the yin and the yang, and these two forces work in concert with each other. They bring balance to the universe. So in yin and yang, the yin is the dark side. It's also characterized in some cultures because, you know, not all cultures conceive of this concept the same way. But the yin, the dark side, is actually the creative element of chaos. Mostly everything is created out of darkness and out of chaos. Even the biblical narrative of the beginning paints and characterizes the beginning as being dark, void, formless, chaotic. Atheists believe the Big Bang created the whole entire universe that out of chaos comes order. And many of us, one of the biggest traits of a narcissistic person is avoidance. You know, it goes back to what I said in the beginning about how adversity, how trials build the thrive mechanism in you. You know, it allows you to be able to reach down deeper for what you need when you go through tests and trials, whereas a narcissistic person is going to fake their way out, fool their way out, manipulate their way out, because for them, that is survival. It's a survivalist mentality. There is not enough for both of us here, so I got to make sure that I have my share. It's a poverty mentality. Some of the richest people that we know on this planet have the most broken, poor spirit. That's the only way you could be a billionaire and watch other people suffering in the world and not even feel compelled at all to share. That's a brokenness. That's a poverty in spirit that... That's a darkness. That's a yin that cannot be comprehended. It cannot even be embraced without a significant amount of pain. And that's what narcissistic people live in. Perpetual, uninterrupted, unresolved pain. And you ain't going to fix it. You didn't break it and you're not going to fix it no amount of all the things they tell you you need to fix no amount of them telling you how perfect and amazing and wonderful you are today is going to actually matter because you are dealing with a mirror those emotions that you feel it's you interacting with what you feel like is the most idealized version of yourself nobody gets in a mirror unless they really want to look good or presentable, or you got to be concerned about what other people think of you and how other people see you to even get in a mirror on any level. Like, think about what I'm saying. I, when I was in high school, I used to get dressed in the dark, like for real. (laughs) Baby, that bus was coming early. I really did not care how them other students felt about me. I just, for various reasons, I'll go into on another episode, but Mirror work is all about impressing other people. And narcissists are willing to hold that mirror up to you, mirror up to you, mirror up to you until it's their turn. And when it's their turn to be the reflected image, you can best believe that you're going to be every grotesque villain and monster. You're going to be the cause of everything terrible that ever happened in their life. I got accused by my narcissist of being the cause of everything terrible that had happened in their life. And we had been together for two years. Like I just met you, baby, you're 38 years old. Like you had a whole several decades of your life (laughs) to do what you had to do, but they can literally conserve all of the power of the sun (laughs) all of the energy that they are draining from you to attack you with it 
Like this is where these people get their satisfaction. This is what makes them successful, wanted, gorgeous, amazing. And it doesn't even matter. It doesn't have to be good. It doesn't have to be your adoration. Like your complete and utter hate and disdain of them is enough to supply them. It's enough to keep them coming back for more. To be fussed at, argued, to be because for them, that's already their internal dialogue. They get fueled up by both positive and negative reinforcement. Anyone that's giving them their energy, that's where they're gonna be at. Whoever's giving off the most energy. And of course, one person is never enough. So they're gonna balance that out to whatever extent that the primary intimate partner will allow it with other people. So these people may recruit family instead of side chicks because the primary intimate partner may say, if you cheat, it's over. I know I did. So I got triangulated with family, with friends, with people that I would not necessarily object to that person being around, but eventually you're going to be told, why can't you be more like this person? Or I'm glad these people aren't like you. You know, they don't, they would never say that to me. They would never treat me that way. You but that person is just, you have become the mirror now. They're telling you everything they think about themselves. And yes, I'm splicing in over my original video to say that is the reason why so many therapists and narcissistic survivors suggest gray rocking that narcissist. Because as long as you are caught up in that emotional mirroring dynamic with them, you're feeding their need for narcissistic supply and energy. But when you can get to a point where you're giving that narcissist nothing but dust, you'll finally see that their excitement to come into that arena with you and continue to play that game over and over and over again will subside over time. They will eventually have to move on to a new high stakes game in order to be able to get their fill of narcissistic supply and energy. Gray rocking is the way out of a narcissistic relationship. Gray rock loosens the gorilla glue bond of the trauma bond. But they also made me feel amazing, like a superhero, like I could do anything. The tables turn, you know, the mirrors turn sometimes and it makes you think it could be different, but it won't and it can't inevitably because you are interacting with an avatar. You are interacting with artificial intelligence. You are interacting with your own shadow man, with your own inner child. You are wrestling with your own demons and disappointments and failures in the form of another person. But they literally are only capable of giving you what you came into the relationship with or taking that. But they're just taking that to give it right back to you. And you're going to find yourself in this entangled, enmeshed dance of who does it better. <laughs> you know, and the mirror has two faces. You're having a great time solving your own problems, but it's like you're having a math party and you only invited yourself. Unplug. You know, we we see these problems and these issues with narcissism now on a society level. I was reading an article where it talked about how millennials were at that time back in the 80s, being dubbed Generation Me. They saw this coming for our generation, that because of the ways that we were being raised and conditioned as children, we were going to grow up to be a narcissistic generation. That was literally what the article said. And now when you see narcissism being this widespread thing, you know, when you see people who are on social media platforms just projecting the most negative things that they believe about themselves on to innocent people, you know, and then you see those people get locked in. No, I'm not. You can't. I know you are, but what am I? Your mama, like, let that shit go. <laughs> let that go. We see it in our intimate relationships all the way out to our culture and our society. You know, we're right here back on the brink of war. Again, like as if we haven't evolved past that, like as if we haven't learned anything from that. And me personally, 
I don't want a war in my house. If I'm going to have a war, it's going to be me versus me, not me versus shadow me. <laughs> I can do that on my own. I do not need an outward manifestation of all the evil in the world to check and challenge me daily. And I hope that this series does really help people that are locked into toxic relationships. I really believe in what I'm saying and in what I'm teaching because no one told me, you know, I know narcissism is everywhere and all of these channels talking about how to do it and they do a much better job in some ways than I do. But maybe someone like me will hear something that I said and it will just be that alarm clock that they need to say, you know what, I think I can do a little bit better than this. I think I can find a real live boy instead of a Pinocchio, instead of a Peter Pan. Yeah, it's fun, but the substance, the depth, the endurance, the patience, the empathy that you need is not in that relationship. It's not in that box. You can go back to my marriage box video where I talk about all the things that you need to put into that box so that on the day that you need to go in that box and get it out, it's there. A marriage box, a relationship box, a business box with a narcissist will always be empty no matter what you put inside of it. Unplug, be unbothered, because when you can do those things, when you can put on those headphones, those noise-canceling headphones, then you can be unleashed. But as always, I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, your neighborhood wireless woman. Make sure you like this video, comment down below because I look forward to seeing you in those comments and subscribe and share but until the next episode class is now dismissed Take control of me